friends, I'm Akash, and a hearty welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the history of one of the greatest American cars of all time. Enter the Jeep. Now, where did the name Jeep come from, and how did it come to be? So, let's take a look at its history. Now, the Jeep story goes all the way back to the year 1941. Now, around this time, World War II was kicking in, and so every country had to gear up just in case something was going to happen. Now, at this time, most of the war was taking place in Europe, but America feared that if the war should happen, America was going to get involved in the war too, and we had to do something about this. So by that point, most war had devolved down into trench warfare around Europe, where you'd pretty much go down into trenches and the opposing uh, side will just repeatedly fire barrages of army soldiers at you until you either lost or you managed to overrun the other. Now, a lot of this type of war, I mean, things didn't really go well and most of the um, vehicles and transportation mechanisms used during that time they weren't exactly the best so sure enough um, things began to become more serious as in 1941 the United States began a plan for a brand new vehicle this vehicle would be able to cross any type of terrain pretty much the dream of a cross-country rider. Now, the, the thing is, this would be a massive task to undertake, and the US military certainly couldn't do it alone. So the military began a project to contract this new um, vehicle to different companies. And so, here was the plan create a contract bidding system where different car companies would create different ideas, prototypes for what they believe this new car should be and how it's going to work. Whoever has built the best military vehicle will win the contract bid and from that point onwards they're going to be making this and mass producing the brand new vehicle. Now this vehicle right here had to make major changes to the current system of transportation during wars, which was terrible at that point. So something had to be done, and this is what the military was going for. So this means that different companies were beginning to try their hand as attempting to come up with something brand new, a new military vehicle to change the scene forever. Now, one of the companies that did this was called Willis, and this is Willis spelled W-I-L-L-Y-S, so that's interesting. Now, Willis was founded by a man named John Willis, and eventually, during the war, Willis focused on building their new um, vehicle for the military. Now, this military vehicle became known as Military Model A and well, this was shortened to MA. So the Willis MA prototype came along. Now, this MA prototype was very, very interesting as it was one of the first few mass-produced four-wheel drive cars. Now, four-wheel drive means that instead of the cars where the front wheels are being powered, and the back wheels are just coming along for the ride and to support the rest of the car, a four-wheel drive would actually have all of the wheels being powered at the same time synchronously. So this would be a massive help for you know driving along. So this actually is the type of car that we here in America now call the 4x4. So this is one of the very first mass-produced 4x4s. Now, now, along with Willis, there were several other companies trying their hand at this, and another one of them was a company called Ford. 
So Ford came along with their prototype, which they called the Ford GP. Now, the GP actually stood for two things. First, the G stood for government, because, well, it's for the government, it's a government contract. And the P stood for something interesting. Now, the, there is a um, length, a specific length for cars. Um, and this is the length between the center of the front wheel and the center of the rear wheel. And so the, um, the length between the front and the rear wheels, this difference is called the wheelbase. Now, this length was 80 inches for Ford's plan. So um, in Ford, uh, it was designated with a letter. This letter was P. Now, this means that you had G and P. G for government, P for the 80 inch wheelbase. So the Ford GP, it was. Now, several other companies, you know, they tried here and there, but in the end, it mostly came down to Willis and Ford. And out of these two, the United States military officially selected Willis to get the contract bid. So the Willis Model A would be getting it. But the Willis noticed something interesting. There were a few uh, differences, modifications that Ford had and that the other major company, Bantram, also had that Willis wanted to include in their own. So after a few changes here and there, the new model, Military Model B, MB, was revealed. This was the car. It was all terrain. It could it had excellent cross country experience. It could go on any terrain and it would work, especially on soft mud, which was a major hassle for most other military cars at the time. This was the dream military vehicle and it was coming to the US military very soon. So in 1941, the Willis MB went straight into production as the first mass produced four wheel drive car. This was it, the dream military vehicle. And as it was going into production, it was a massive success. It worked really well. And in the end, it would be the one to change the entire history of military cars forever. Now with military vehicles like the Jeep, and by that time it wasn't actually called the Jeep, it was still the Willis MB, and I'll get to why they called it the Jeep in a moment, but first, the Willis MB right here was fantastic. So Willis kept going on, producing more and more of these until 300,000 of these were produced. 300,000 Willis MBs were produced over the course of four years, but midway through that, Willis had figured that there was no way that they were going to be able to do this alone. So they had to bring in someone else. So they asked the US government, hey, uh, it's going to be really difficult for us to do this alone. Do you think you can bring in the other guy over there? The other guy was Ford again. So Ford was asked to help with it. And so Ford joined in the contract. So both of these companies, Willis and Ford, became co-contractors and they both helped create the Willis MB. Now for Ford's name, GP, that technically didn't work now because this one wasn't actually the one selected. The one selected was the Willis MB. So when Ford had to give it a new name for their version, they decided that um, to name the Willis MB for Ford, that add a W at the end of GP. W stands for, well, Willis. Because what Ford was doing was just licensing Willis's already made car. And so with this, the Ford GPW and the Willis MB, same car, two different names by two different companies. Now, interesting thing here, when the uh, US military actually classified this name, GPW, they um, wrote that it was a general purpose military vehicle. Now, most people assume this to mean, huh, general purpose GP. Huh, well that's what it must have stood for. No, it doesn't. The G is government and the P is for the 80 inch wheelbase, not general purpose. But that's what most people thought it was, even though it wasn't. 
Now, the Willis MB and the Ford GPW, same car, two different names, went along in production, and in total, it produced 600,000 total cars over the course of four years from 1941 to 1945. It was the best available military vehicle at the time. It was perfect. Now, as things are going along, eventually, at the end of World War II, well, there wasn't really much need to produce more. And, well, they already had 600,000. They don't need more of these cars. So, after they ended production in 1945, they ended up using all of the all these cars for different um, wars in the rest of the world. Yep, that does mean that they used it throughout the Cold War in, you know, the Korean War, Vietnam War. They all helped with this. Now, this right here, a little while later. Now, you may know that America was in the Philippines for quite a while as, um, as in order to push the Japanese out of the area, America took the Philippines for quite a while. And so when the Americans finally left the Philippines, they decided that, hey, I guess we have all of these surplus Jeeps here and uh, we can't really carry them back. And since you guys are now our friends, do you mind if we just, uh, you know, lend all these Jeeps over to you? So America just left the surplus of Jeeps within the country back to the Philippines. And so what the Filipino did was awesome. They actually turned it into a type of bus. And from then on, the jeepney became the most used form of transportation within the Philippines. It is a really, really wholesome story and I love it. But here's something interesting. During the midst of this whole jeep thing, um, the Willis company figured that, hey, you know how this is successful in the military? What if we made a civilian version? It found that the need for a civilian edition of the Jeep was really, really good. It was in high demand because it was one of the best cars you could get. So, in 1943, the Willis Company began making civilian Jeeps. So, the civilian Jeep brand came into um, dealerships or whatever the 1930s, 1940s equivalent of dealerships were throughout America and it was pretty popular and after even after the military jeeps ended um, these ones kept going along and now if you're wondering uh, why it was called a jeep um, let me explain. So you may know that America likes to shorten absolutely everything. We like to simplify things. And a great example of this would be the American military, which would shorten every possible thing you could find, you know, to make radio communication a lot easier. So what they did was shorten this name, Ford GPW. Eventually, that became shortened to the name Jeep. And from that point onwards, the term Jeep would be used to describe not just the Willis MB and Ford GPW, but any military vehicle like it. So this just shows how much influence the car actually had. Now, this Jeep name was officially trademarked by the Willis Company around the 1943 mark, and they began selling these for the civilians. Of course, they removed all the totally obviously military parts of it and made it a civilian car. The utility truck Jeep came along and it was really, really successful. That is until the fact that Willis, once the war ended, decided that they weren't going to make any of the passenger cars that, they had, that had brought them to success years earlier. So this meant that all they were selling was Jeeps, Jeeps, and Jeeps. And oh, did I forget? They also sold Jeeps. Every single thing they sold was a Jeep or a variant of a Jeep. They made this thing called the Jeepster. And it's pretty much everything was a Jeep around the company. Um, but eventually, in the 1952, they decided to come back to the passenger car market by introducing the Willis Aero. And it was a massive disappointment. Willis Company shut down one year later and was bought by a new company called Kaiser. Now, as a result of this, Willis, eh, well, Willis was gone. And despite having created one of the most popular military vehicles ever made, 
they went down because the Willis era was a massive flop. And so this means that Willis was, laser bought, was later bought by the Kaiser company. And they started going about with Jeeps as well until they too began um, going a little bit faltering here and there. And eventually they were bought by a much larger company named American Motors, or AM for short. Now AM was one of the largest motoring companies at the time in America. And so uh, this was, um, it turned out that the Jeep helped massively boost their portfolio as the Jeep began to become so, so much more successful and more people found it more lucrative, which means more sales and more Jeeps, which is what we want and it's what American Motors wanted. But meanwhile, something interesting was going on. Now, in the 1970s, um, a little French company called Renault was coming along, um, found American Motors, and decided that it would do whatever it took to run that company and get the Jeep. And of course, all the other American Motors brands, which were equally popular, but Jeep was it. It was so successful and everyone wanted a Jeep. And companies wanted the Jeep. Brand. So what was going on was Renault was slowly getting more and more of a stake in the company. And eventually it went all the way to the point where Renault had so much of a controlling stake that they themselves could start selling all of these Jeeps. And so it pretty much came to the point where Renault almost owned the company in full. But then another company, this time it's an American car company that you all may have also heard of, Chrysler comes along. Chrysler comes back and manages to take most of American Motors and eventually Chrysler acquires American Motors in 1988. And by this point, American Motors fell under Chrysler's control, which means that Chrysler ran Jeep which was like the big, big thing. Now, of course, Chrysler was immensely popular already at, with its other, um, other brands like Dodge and Ram. It was an instant hit. But now with Jeep under its portfolio, it became super, super popular. Everyone still wanted a Jeep. And so as Jeeps kept going along, Chrysler kept um, making these Jeeps, the civilian Jeeps. And by this time, the need for a Jeep in the military sense was long gone. They'd already replaced it with a different, um, with a different one that was later known as the Humvee, but that's a different story for another time. Now the Jeep right here, the Jeep was still, the civilian form was still the biggest thing there. Eventually, around like the 2010s or so, Chrysler, well, they kept going on with Jeep. Eventually, Chrysler merged with the company Fiat around the 2000s, 2010, and eventually they became FCA Fiat Chrysler Automobiles. And a little while later, they merged with another company called PSA Group, which is actually French. And this actually happened in like literally this year. These two companies merged to form Stellantis. And now Stellantis itself is the company that currently runs Jeep. The famed civilian car brand that everyone loves. That is why the Jeep has come to how it is today. That's why Jeep is called that way. And that is the history of one of the greatest American car brands of all time, Jeep. Thanks so much for watching and see you soon. Love you, Akash.